The theme for the ironic moment this morning is present your bodies a living sacrifice. And I just have uh, one short scripture to read first, and it's Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And whenever I think about sacrifice, the first thing that comes to mind is time, my time. And after a long day of working, I'm pretty protective of my time. This year, the Deacon's Quorum, we changed our meeting time from uh, Sunday afternoon to Thursday night at 7. And it seems like every month when it's time to have that meeting, I'm tired and I'd rather just stay at home and uh, do what I want to do. But I have a responsibility and I, I go. And every time that I do, I feel really uplifted. And I'm always happy that I took that time to be there. The same happens at Wednesday night prayer service or whenever I have to go on a home ministry visit. In the beginning, it seems like I'm sacrificing a lot for the Lord. But in the end, it, I'm just shown how much of a blessing it truly is to be there and to have that experience. When we give the Lord our time and talents and give up on trying to do our own will, and truly sacrificing everything, we will be blessed in so many ways and Zion will be ever closer. My brethren and I uh, welcome you to this Sunday morning worship service, and we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be with you. I'm starting to feel at home here. I've been here a few times in the last couple of months, so it's good to be here. I'd like to uh, introduce just a, a couple of people here. Um, I think everyone except for me attends here at Blue Springs and you have your bulletin before you. I did uh, want to mention that uh, Phyllis Fiedler will be doing the Ministry of Music this morning. We look forward to that and also wanted to recognize that Christina Purvis is the pianist and I think a lot of times the pianists are overlooked but you know they have to practice a lot to uh, maintain their ability to play. And then our speaker this morning is Elder David Hasselman. He's a member of this congregation, and he and his wife Stephanie and daughter Daisy attend here. And I think that he has a very interesting job, a vocation. He sells parts for heavy equipment and does so all over the world um, via the Internet. So uh, it's quite a, quite a job. So we look forward to what he will present this morning. The uh, other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, life is a blessing, I believe. You know, the Book of Mormon says that men are that they might have joy. And uh, I try to take a walk each day. And when I get out there and I'm walking and the sun's shining and it's pleasant, and that does happen occasionally in Missouri, <laughs> I just feel that it's a blessing to be alive. And I really appreciate the blessings that God showers upon us continually. With that, uh, I will read our call to worship. Behold, the Lord hath created the earth that it should be inhabited, and he hath created his children that they should possess it. He ruleth high in the heavens, for it is his throne, and this earth is his footstool, and he loveth those who will have him to be their God. Let's continue with hymn 15.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Father, to give Thee praise and honor and adoration. And Father, we uh, give Thee thanks for this opportunity to come once more, to step inside this quiet chapel, a place that we know that we can step away from that outside world and be, be with You and Your Son. Father, I would invite Your Holy Spirit to be with us this morning that it would be in bountiful and us, and uh, it would be with our brother uh, David as he brings his message this morning. May we uh, be a people this morning of one heart and one mind with our eyes single to your glory as we continue in our service. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen. top of your bulletin, you will see our monthly and daily theme, monthly theme being to repent from unrighteous works, and today's, this morning's particular theme of overcoming evil with good. And it came to my mind that in our offering of our tithings, our oblations, and our other offerings, we're given an opportunity in a way towards the building of the kingdom to overcome evil with good. Because we take that which, of course, we know already belongs to the Lord, but which the world says that we should use towards our own selfish purposes, and instead of doing so, we turn it back to the Lord's use and His purposes. So may we keep that in mind as we consider our tithings and our offerings. Would you bow with me? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the many bountiful blessings that you have bestowed upon us in our lives. This day and time in which we live, the opportunity that we have had both to know thee and to be a part of thy great work. As we give a portion back of that which is already thine, we pray thy blessing upon the hands that give and upon the hands whose task it is to utilize that which is given, that thy kingdom might go forward 
that we would soon see the day when thy Son descends in the east. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with one another. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. I read that wrong. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good.
Brothers and sisters, I also greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Phyllis, and thank you, Christina, for uh, sharing your talents with us. Uh, it goes along very well with, uh, with the theme and with the sermon this morning. Kind of got off my list here. Um, also, like to welcome those listening on live stream this morning. Um, it's really a, a, a neat uh, ministry that uh, we can touch the lives of people that aren't within our walls. The theme for this morning is overcome evil with good. You just heard me read in the scripture reading the entire verse, which uh, can be found in Romans chapter 12, verse 21, and I'm, I'm going to read that whole verse again. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. First, I'd like to uh, look at some definitions of, of three important words in that scripture. The first one is to overcome. Not just to prevail over or rise above, but to uh, and I look these work, words up in, in the Greek text. The first definition is to conquer. So not just to, prefe- to prevail over or rise above, but to conquer. This, choice, this verse gives us a choice. We can be overcome by evil or we can overcome it. The next word is a word that we all use and know, and the word is evil. In the Greek text, uh, it's of a bad nature or not such as it ought to be. I'm going to use that a little bit just to not use the word evil. Um, Also of a mode of thinking, feeling, or acting that is wrong or wicked. Another definition is troublesome, injurious, pernicious, destructive, and baneful. The final word that that I would like to uh, bring a definition of is, is the word good. And in the Greek, it's of a good constitution or nature. Useful, pleasant, agreeable, joyful, happy, excellent, distinguished, upright, and honorable. The English language changes very much throughout the years. Even from when I was a kid, many words don't mean what they used to. When I think of good, I usually think of something that's okay. Could be better. Or better than better would be the best. One word I overuse a lot is awesome. Things that I think say are awesome may not be awesome. Maybe they're just good. In Genesis, Moses wrote... Uh, This is chapter 1, verse 7, in the creation. And I, God, saw the light, and that light was good. And I, God, divided the light from the darkness. We know that light is more than good. Light is essential. Light is powerful. It provides life. In Matthew, chapter 19, verse 17, Jesus talks to, to a servant, and he said, why, why callest thou me good? There is none good but that one. That is God. Now that we have some other words, and that we've defined words in that verse, I'm going to read the verse again. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. What's Paul talking about in this verse? 
What's it mean to be overcome of evil? I have about four examples here. One is to be gripped by fear. Maybe a person who fills their mind and heart with news channels. A person can become, over time, weighted down with the weight of evil in the world. Gripped with fear and gradually loses their peace and their joy. What is that but to be overcome of fear, uh, of evil? The second is to be, to be pressured by people. Maybe a student or a member of a sports team. Most of his teammates are pursuing a, a completely different lifestyle from what this person has learned at home. He has the pressures to conform to the world. He goes to parties, tries drugs, experiments with other things. What is that but to be overcome of evil? Hardened by culture. It's pretty easy for evil to creep into us through work. Stephanie, Stephanie and I tell of a, of a testimony that we have from our time in Germany. And that was uh, one of uh, speaking in or understanding tongues. The uh, lady that we visited with knew very little English and we knew very little German. The, first, the second time we met, it was like we understood each other perfectly. It was like the, the Lord was there translating for us. We left and we didn't understand it. The next time we were there, we were kind of hoping for the same thing. And I remember the, the, the lady, she had a grandson, and she kept telling us that his, he was, her, name, her word was Buza, which in German is evil. And it's like, no, he's not evil, but the word meant more than that. He was troublesome, we'll put it that way. This morning I'd like to focus not on the evil but on the good. I'd like to show how we can use the good to improve ourselves, not only for our personal sake, but to promote the building of the kingdom. I've heard several sermons that suggest that we replace evil with good by replacing evil with joy. That's an excellent plan. I've tried to do this, and I will continue to try to do this. I'm not always good at it. I've watched others improve their lives by replacing evil thoughts with joyful thoughts. But I believe that we can take this concept a little further. Let's go to the verse before. It says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirst, give him drink. This gives us something to do. It's been said, and I, I tried to find out where this quote came from, and I, I can't, f there, there's disagreement on where this quote come from, but the only necessary thing for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. So we need to keep from doing nothing. Next few things that I mentioned may strike some nerves, but I feel that they need to be mentioned. Remember, if I point fingers, there's always three fingers pointing back at me. When Daisy was younger, there was a certain secular television show that we started to let her watch. After a couple of weeks, we noticed that her behavior was uh, changed, and I would say not for the better. We stopped letting her watch that show and replaced it 
with something a little more appropriate. A few months later, she asked if she could start watching it again, and we let her. After a few weeks, her be beha behavior again started to change. Again, we stopped letting her watch it and replaced it with something better. Maybe some of us saints watch television shows that affect our behavior. We have the responsibility to monitor our attitude, mon monitor our spirits, to make sure that they are as they ought to be. Music can be very influential to our attitudes and our behavior. It's important to be aware of our spiritual condition and what influences it. I enjoy country music. Once in a while, I do encounter a song that's not as it ought to be. This is when I change the station or delete it from my playlist, depending on what media I'm listening to. And the thing about music and, and Christian music, no, it seems like no matter what genre of, of mu music that you like, there's usually a Christian music that has taken up that genre. There's good classical Christian music, good country Christian music. I'm sure that all the places that we go and the people that we associate with are not of a bad nature or troublesome. Sometimes I, I do find myself with people that some would call troublesome through work, through family. At this point, I have to stop and pray and ask the Lord how I can bring this person ministry. Prayer is another thing that we should be replacing evil with. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are. You can take a moment to ask your Heavenly Father for a blessing. There's always people that need our prayers. Sometimes Stephanie will see someone asking for money or, or maybe is indigent. If she's alone or with Daisy, she may not feel comfortable. Or may not feel it's safe to offer assistance. But she is offer to she is quick to offer a prayer for that person that they would receive a blessing. Or if she knows the situation, she may call someone that can help. But it's important that we do something. Obvious, obviously, there is someone that we can use as an example, and that is our Lord and Savior. From Luke chapter 6, we read, For if ye love them only who love you, what reward have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what reward have you? For sinners also lend us sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing, again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For, is, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father is also is merciful." Let's consider the evils that were done against, against our Lord. What about the injustice that he endured? What about the violence he suffered? What about Christ facing all, the, all this alone because he was abandoned by his friends? 
None of us has endured evil as Jesus did. But he was not overcome by evil. He overcame evil with good. He trusted the Father even when he could not see what the Father was doing. While hanging on the cross, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yet a few hours later, he said, Into your hands I commit my spirit. On the cross, Jesus prayed for the enemies who persecuted him. Persecuted him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In that prayer, he committed, he created, sorry, my eyes messing with me today. In that prayer, he created room for them to repent. There is hope for us in Jesus Christ. Come to God today and say, I don't want to be overcome by evil or defined by evils that I have suffered. I don't want to be shaped by the evils of this world. Evil did not overcome him. And if he is really with you and in you, it will not overcome you either. As you all know, in Galatians it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. If you have those things in you, it's pretty hard to be overcome with evil, of evil. Principles described in Romans are applicable at every stage of a conflict, and they are echoed throughout the Bible and the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. I'll read just a few verses here from Proverbs. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over transgression. When Jesus was talking about the two great commandments, the second one is, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. From the Book of Mormon, Jacob was uh, writing of, of pruning the vineyard. From uh, chapter 3, verse 122, And this I do that perhaps the roots thereof may take strength because of their goodness and because of the change of the branch change of the branches that the good may overcome evil and from section 96 and i give unto you a commandment that ye shall forsake all evil and cleave unto all good and ye shall live by every word which proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. For he will give unto the faithful line upon line, precept upon precept. In closing, applying these to our lives can be difficult, but it is always worth the effort because God delights to work in and through us as we serve him. And a promise from Paul. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor, labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you.
our Father in heaven, we come uh, again this morning in humble adoration of thy greatness and thy majesty for the blessings that uh, we receive each day and for the blessings that we have even received this hour. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we've had this morning to come and to worship you and to be strengthened by your spirit, to be strengthened by the, your word, by the study of the scriptures that we've had the opportunity to have, to be strengthened now, Father, by the preached word. And we pray that we might be able to take those things that our brother has brought and to discern the things that are needful in our lives, that we, we might come to even a clearer understanding of your will for us as, as, as individuals, and yet for the, your will for us collectively as a church, as your church, in that desire of yours to reclaim your creation and to build your kingdom here on earth. And we do, Father, look for that day that we might be worthy to feel the presence of your Son even with us as we desire to cleanse ourselves in such a way that we can enjoy his presence. Would you go with us now? May we find the peace in our lives that comes from having you close to us and may it work its wonders within our lives and bring us to a, um, a fuller dedication of your desire and your work that you have placed within us. Go now, Father, with us as we desire thee and direct our ways. And we ask it in the holy and precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> 